Greetings, my friends. I'm Mr. Mokulover, and thank you for joining me here in not Old World Blues, but TNO: The Last Days of Europe, in which we are playing as that beautiful Taomsk. Ah, oh, what a nation! And right now, we are trying to do our focus with the humming of music and keep an eye on quite a few things, such as how the elections are going, which we need to keep an eye on the entire campaign because there is a good chance with this election, actually. There's a, there's a chance that we'll lose this current election, but the following one, which I heard of is in 67 or 66, 67 or so, we got to keep an eye on our popularity as the humanist faction because, well, we could lose elections and then we wouldn't be able to continue down this focus tree that we want. Now, we could weaken stuff here, which would be a bad idea, and we could do anti-humanist propaganda, which would also be a bad idea, so we're not going to do that. We're doing also anti-bastelard propaganda. So I asked you guys a couple comments yesterday, or a couple questions, and you guys replied with your comments. Uh, we're also scavenging for loot. We're preparing a raid against Camerovo. Kamer Hopefully we can beat him up and smack him down. And we're going to need some ooh, command power for that, I see. But I asked you guys about the Siberian plan, so let's start with that. So, yesterday I asked you guys what we should do with the legacy of the Siberian plan. So it's recommended that I go ahead and focus as much on, as possible on consumer goods, if we can. Uh, reduce consumer goods, get more factory output and get more construction speed, but also keep in mind that the discontent can potentially lead to rebellion, and that would not be very good. So, what we're gonna choose first, since we have a little bit of political power here, oh, efficiency gain, more efficiency in IC, or industrial capacity is not bad. What we're gonna do is, Ooh, decrease consumer goods factories by 7.5%. Now, I like this one where you decrease workers' discontent by 3. It raises it up by 5%. But that's not bad. It increases discontent by... Ooh, that's factory... Ooh. Yeah, I don't like that one because even though you get more construction speed, you increase consumer goods factories. Eh, that's, not, that's not very good. This is not bad. It decreases consumer goods factories by 7.5. Industrial capacity... Where's the industrial capacity? This one, you no know, industrial capacity. I'm looking for more industrial capacity so we can offset um, this one. Production quotas? No, no, it was this one. I see. No, that's that's I see. Oh yeah, no, that's one, that's the one we want to do. Optimize consumer goods for production. Eh, we might do that one. I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me too much. Seven point five percent is not too bad. So I'm gonna go with this one first. And that spirit is over here. Yeah. So minus 12%. Not bad. Factory output is minus 0 0.06. So, eh, could be worse. Even though we can't get too many more negative factories. So I guess at this point we should get more uh, speed, maybe. But anyways. we got to focus on the elections and keep an eye on this. We want to invade, like basically right now. Let's go ahead and initiate the raid. They have one loot. Let's see what happens. Anything? Oh, yeah, we have to wait. We don't get a border... Ah, see, we don't get a border war with them because they have to pay their tribute first. Miraculously, Kamarovo has caved in and paid his tribute, handling over our desired loot from their state. Bloodshed has been avoided, and our men live to fight another day. It is unlikely that Kamarovo is to surrender to us again so easily. Nice, we get political power. Hey, we can build new schools, too. Uh, let's grab new works. I like... I really like doing worker stuff. Now, can I invade these guys over here? Because if we look... Kamarovo. They had up to four divisions, right? Yeah, they have the four. You guys have the same exact thing. Except, Kimmerovo has motorized, but they have light infantry, so... Maybe, maybe... We should invade them, so... Also, there's another comment from yesterday saying I should invade Omsk. I, I, my goal, when you play as any Russian miner, or warlord, you take over all of Russia as best as possible. The Croatian Autumn, very cool. Let's go ahead and grab some of this. We've got more research speed. Let's grab even more research speed. That'd be very good. Weaken modernist I authority... Yeah, we're probably going to have to do that one. Yeah. Because if you weaken... Oh, wait. Uh, weaken authority. Decreases December's popularity in a random district. And when removed, decreases Salon authority just by a little bit. And that's the one on the right here. So we need popularity as well, but so this is probably not a bad idea to do. Um, I've been on the Reddit and looking around like at the history of what people have said. Sometimes it's not worth doing. Just do your own. Prop up your own people. That's what matters the most, so... We'll see what happens. Tea time with Shostakovich. There's no better way to connect with voters than to actually meet them. The leader and candidate of the humanists, Dmitry Shostakovich, has begun a program where he campaigns and meets with the masses. These tea times, as they are called, let Shostakovich learn the problems of the everyday farmer to an elite artist. Shostakovich's charisma and populist movement have become famous and beloved all around Tomsk. This has given the humanists great popularity with the people and within the salons. Along with their simple solutions and promises of a better life, the humanist ideology has reached all the hearts and minds of Tomsk. More and more people are beginning to believe there's a real chance of achieving a humane and unified democracy. 
Very cool. It's only 14 days. Also, there's another comment from yesterday saying, I, I, I told you guys some of the things that I that I like from Shostakovich. Uh, also, Waltz number two. Oh, that's so good. Oh, my goodness. I love that one. I, I listened to it too much when I was younger. Woo. Or a few years ago. Uh, uh, mm, mm. I, I will do this one, actually. Actually, you know what? With seven... Oh, we lost one. An ultimatum. We received an ultimatum from Siberian Black Army. They're usually, they demand that we hand over a tribute of loot, or else they will raid us and take it away from us anyways. We are impasse to decide. Do we decide to engage in confrontation with the Siberian Black Army, possibly risking our men of dying at the hands of our enemies, or do we instead send down and cave into their demands, giving them the desired loot, allowing our men to live to fight another day? Do we have loot? I thought we were already spending it. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go and do working concessions, because we're currently at minus 12%, but at, at the same time, we I don't think we can use any more factories. It's... it's Literally zero, so... And I do want to make sure that discontent is pretty pretty darn low. 18, okay, let's see. No change, cool. Alright, so where's Siberian Black Army? Oh, they're right here. Oh boy, god, that is... <clears throat> How strong are these guys? Present local development results. Six, oh, that's quite a few divisions. They're out of manpower. And we have until when to do this? There's so many things we got to scroll up to. 11 days, that's fine. Let's get our guys over there so we get some, maybe a little bit of entrenchment maxed out. Maybe just, 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 just a tiny bit of entrenchment, please. And get more organization, of course, too. That'd be very good. Cool. Another one is another comment from yesterday. Yeah, uh, someone recommend just keep checking party popularity in the decisions tabs. Just to make sure that you're always okay. Hey, humans have a, the most along popularity. Great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Of course, that does help through our focuses. Uh, let's see, what else? Yeah, invest. So invest in the Siberian plan now. Because you can lose the ability to modify it later. So we really want to set it up so we can set ourselves up very, very well in the future. Alright, I think our guys... Oh, yeah, they're looking not too strong right there. That's good. And we might have a river to defend from, so... Perhaps we'd be best to stand down. We will not back down so easily. Yeah, go suck a fat one. Bunch of anarchists. Get that infantry in there. Led by... Nikolai Batyuk. Batyuk. Ah, uh, tea time with a composer president. Oh, we're going to go adaptable immediately. Yes, please. So, Boris was quite surprised to find his neighbor's tea house monitored by policemen. Perhaps they'd come for tea, but not the tea house often held any tea easy day these days. But Boris found the prospect unlikely. They checked him for weapons and then warmly ushered him inside. There were 60, the 60 years old widower saw the usuals of the tea house, many of whom sat around a familiar figure. The famed composer Shostakovich, holding a teacup in his one good hand, was chatting with the people in a lively fashion. Boris headed to a table and hopefully asked for tea. Uh, the owner nodded. Perhaps the electoral candidate had brought him some tea with him. Boris read the newspaper for some time. Eventually, some new regulars came in and went someone out. Shostakovich limped over to his table, accompanied by Sasha, one of Boris's old friends. The composer asked if he could share a cup of tea with Boris, and Boris nodded. The presidential candidate shared a variety of topics with Sasha and Boris. The conversation flawed awkwardly at time, and naturally at others. A reserved intellectual as he was, the, warms, the man's warmth and charisma helped uh, lubricate any social friction. Eventually, the topic of music came, and Shostakovich asked Boris if he possessed any records. Only the one, Nesimfini by Stravinsky, Boris replied. The president's lit up. Eyes lit up. Can't say I'm a big fan. <laughs> Ain't no fan of fancy orchestras. The record was my daughter's. The president nodded. Didn't say anything. Boris can help but sigh. The other man was too insightful to inquire about his daughter's fate. She disappeared east during the War of the Agoda, Boris concluded. His friend Sasha winced at the topic. The composer smiled tightly. I know she still lives, my friend. When the Republic marches east, you will be freed of Stravinsky's harmonics when we return her the record. <laughs> Unless you uh, then uh, have acquired a taste for it. Boris smiled sadly. So did Sasha. The candidate was a likable bastard even for an egg-headed intellectual artist. All in all, a very quite pleasant conversation. Uh, the gymnasiums follow suit. Stability. Let's get some stability. With the associations now being voted, it is time for the regular people of Tomsk to do the same. While they're not while not choosing out every candidate as the Duma did, the people choose the two who had the most support in the Duma. Once the people's votes are counted, the new president and Salon will take power. It's expected, however, that the first choice of the Duma will be the first choice of the people's will, as the Duma was just voted in by the people a few months earlier. Meanwhile, to further complicate things, the educated are also putting into special pools to be able to vote on more specific matters. This will be dictated by the constitution of the, the ruling party puts into place, but can vary from choosing ministerial positions to having no special powers at all. Uh, wow. We can weaken authority from the Vastelards, but... Hmm. Open district mapped. We are doing at least better down here. Yeah, that's quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Where are we doing another decision here? Weakening authority. Ooh. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do both. Because I want to weaken all their authority as much as possible. Even though we are technically still Decembrists. We'll see what happens, you know. It's not bad. Almost 30%. We're top dog there. 
We're, we're in third place there. The enemy's defeated. Ah, great. Recent reports have been sent in of an overwhelming victory against a recent party of raiding bandits and a brutal standoff. They were decimated by rebelling for defense forces, and now their bodies lie scattered and mutilated by war. With survivors dashing for cover and retreating into the military frontiers, while soldiers chant songs of victory and heroism in the face of inv invading evil. The rush of bloody defeat will certainly teach them a lesson about attacking the lands of Tomsk for years to come. We get, hey, stability, political power, and a few more rifles. Great. Now come back over here. We gotta kill these guys off, too. Or at least beat them up. Let's see. Uh, which one do we want? I think it's Mikhail. Mikhail, I think. Was oh, the right guy. Uh, anything over there? Nope. And see, we can. Well, we need to upper, lower house majority. Ooh. Well, we're still uh, December, so we can't quite do that. So that's okay. Form of Central Siberian Republic raiding. We can't raid anyone yet. That's kind of disappointing. We're training new workers. Please let me raid, please. We could do stuff down here, but mm, it's okay. It's not really worth it right now since we really need as much political power as possible. I don't mind doing more stability stuff. Getting more stability is always a good idea. So, actually, that's not bad. External investments, but that we can't really do that right now. We lose stability in exchange for war support. Eh, that could be pretty useful. Over here, let's see. Brazil won wins the World Cup. Congratulations to the champions. Oh, now we're down to six. Collapse of the triumvirate. Gymnasiums follow suit. The associations make their vote. The time has come for the associations present in the Duma to vote, with the hearing of speeches made by each candidate in debates in the Duma and salons. It seems all have come to a clear choice. The new president will be voted in and will wield the executive power of the government and will decide how, of how all of Tomsk will move forward in the future. Also, with the election of the president comes the party's own constitution, which allows the party to govern how they want, instead of governing within the rules of a set constitution. While it may only last as long as the party's in power, it still means each party has the power to transform the entire government. The association's vote could quickly or quite possibly change the future of Tomsk. Very much so. All right, so what do we have here? Only minus 7%. Uh, we did help out the discontent last time, so that's not too bad. Ooh, train workers. Please let me beat up people. I want to beat up people, please. <laughs> Give some goods. Eh. Actually, you know what? Let's go do that now. I don't mind doing that because we get more factory speed. So maybe we lost... Well, technically one more. Maybe. Hmm. Well, I'll increase it anyways because we need more construction speed. But anyways... Uh, minus 5% is still not bad. Construction speed 0 0.07. Factory alpha could be a little bit better, but we're, I think we're doing okay on it for now. Do you know we didn't, get any, we didn't get that much army speed from that battle? Kind of sucks, but that's okay. Definitely okay with me. Seven factories. Could use definitely more, though. Oh, my goodness. Please. Oh, associations make their vote. And the new chairman. The results are in, and a new president has finally been chosen. <clears throat> After weeks of campaigning and speeches, a new face can be can finally lead Tomsk into the future. A new age, agenda and constitution have been chosen, and it's finally time for the people to be led onto a new path. Tomsk can finally move on from a provisional government to a legitimate one. The future looks bright for a democracy and for Russia. A new republic has risen, one that can come forward as a representative and protector of all who yearn for freedom and democracy. Well, let's see who wins. Uh, Anti-modernist propaganda increase humanist salon authority. Uh... Oh, wait. So if you do anti-modernist propaganda, it greatly increases modernist popularity in a random district. So you definitely don't want to do that. Hmm. Okay, so now they're at Salon Authority. But the Salon Popularity. Cool. And horizontal stuff is very good. I pause it. There we go. There goes the research. 60. Just grab some more. We're going to be building up the entire game, so... Yeah, this is very confusing if you don't look at, really look at this. It decreases December's salon authority. But it also increases everyone else's authority as well. But it increases the modernist popularity. So, Turkey is at war. War in the desert. Nah, we don't really care. Consolidate rule. No, no, no. Modernist propaganda. Weakened propaganda. Uh, actually, greatly increases popularity in a district. Eh, eh. I mean, it's... You, could maybe do that, but meh. Italian Empire. Okay. They're going to war with a lot of people, aren't they? Production efficiency. Output. Where's output? Potential capacity. More I see is pretty good to do. Oh, let's get through the first one. That's, that's, how much do we get a day? 1.3? That's not bad, actually. Divert civilian production. Do, uh, do that one. It goes up to 19, but we were at 21 earlier, so I don't really care. Not bad. We're back down to minus 12%. And we still haven't gotten any more factories, but that's okay. In the future, once we get more and more factories, that'll be very, very helpful. Ah, new chairman. In the working class districts of Tomsk, as in some of the most refined cafes and tea houses, supporters of the humanist society followed the radio with beta breath. When Dmitry Shostakovich's victory in the presidential election was announced, many wept 
Through the years of anarchy, during the slow and painful collapse of the Central Siberian Republic, others had lost faith in the decency and inherent goodness of each Russian citizen, not the humanist though. Throughout the celebrations, workers gathered around public speakers listening to the Humanist Salon's manifesto. The party's activists loudly rejected Marxist socialism as well as this organized anarchy. A new modern choir of democratic voices would rise directed by the government and as maestro. To the citizens, the nation would bestow help, would try to limit its excesses of industrial work, and would ensure education and health in good times as well as in bad times. In return, the nation would expect effort from its children, a new culture of political assemblies, a willingness to dare and improve the world around them, and a steely determination to join the army's citizen soldiers that would march out onto the fields of central Siberia. In his apartments, Dmitry Shostakovich celebrated with friends and family. The following years would not be so easy, though. But from Pasternak's frail shoulders unto Shostakovich's own failing body, the burden of the state would be carried. The Republic would endure a new era for the workers. Gumminstri. Gumminstri, huh. It will be known now as the Central Siberian Republic. Cool. Remove provisional government. And actually, what did provisional government give us? Was there anything good? Uh, more war support. So we lost war support. Eh, we can always get more later, though. Oh, we changed colors. Nice. We are nice papa. Cool. Very cool. A victory for the Humanist Association. The people have cast their votes, and the election has, been, has decided it. The Humanists under Shostakovich have acquired the popular mandate to change the Constitution of the Republic, an organization vowing to preserve and extend the direct, direct democratic elements of the last government. They have also promised to a period of growth and prosperity, and to free the factories and laborers from the, under the yoke of repressive laws. Time can only tell whether Shostakovich and the Humanists can rise to the challenge, but their whole Republic watches, and arms bear the flags aloft in the streets. To celebrate, the famed composer himself invited the people to witness the performance of his most beloved work, the Jazz Suite. Aw, oh, yeah. And for day and night, no citizen Tomsk shall know work and carry only joy and music that flow through the city, and every citizen shall drink their fill. Aw, oh, yeah. Very nice. Alright, so here we are again. Let's see. Production quotas? Eh, probably not. We could maybe... Can we get more stability yet? We cannot. That's fine. Close that out. Let time go on just a little bit. That'd be fine. Oh, uh, here we go. So we gotta do some more stuff here. So let's take a look at this. 28 seats. Hey, we're top dog now. 29. No, we're actually tied with modernists. So we, election results, cool. Has four things here. Huh. Okay, okay. So we need as much popularity as possible. But getting more authority would be pretty beneficial as well. Has lower house majority. Ooh. Ooh. House of Representatives. Cool. So, as for December, support and lower house. Increases, decreases our support. Greatly increases. Yeah, no, I don't think I'm good. Anti December propaganda. Decrease humanist support. Oh, man. Ask for humanist support. Decreases authority. Oh, consolidate humanist rule. Authority there. Pro humanist campaign. Um, I'm not really sure. Do you think it's better if I just do consolidate rule and pro humanist campaign? Because this just, it hurts your authority. I mean, it greatly increases the lower house support, which is nice. Uh, you know what? I, I guess, you know, I'll take this first. It'll lower our authority. But the next step we'll do is do a consolidate and then pro-humanist. Uh, yeah, go ahead and close that out as well. We need that one. Sembrist decreases. Yeah, so we're going to lose. So we just, wow, we lost a lot. Modernists just got back all the way up there. Holy cow. We are on a tightrope, aren't we? So we lost authority. We got a little bit more, hopefully, popularity right. Yeah. Greatly increases human support. And then next we'll probably go with consolidate rule. Just because that gives us more authority, which we just lacked. Alright, can I go to war against the Siberian Black Army? Oh, it is over over. They're not looking too strong, though. They're out of manpower. Six to eight divisions. We might be able to... I really... Oh. Oh, yeah, we can do these guys down here. Novosibirsk. Oh, that's the actual Siberian flag. Oh, okay. Four to eight divisions. They're pretty... If I'd rather fight the Siberian Black Army than Novosibirsk, to be honest with you. Oh. Ah, there we go. Krasnoyarsk. I got a couple divisions. We might actually not win here. They have two, three divisions, probably. Three, one, two, three, so... Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We might not be able to win. We Maybe we can, maybe we won't. Can I beat up Kimarovo again? Hmm. <laughs> Cool. Let's see what happens, though. 50. 1.62. That's really nice. That's pretty darn good, in my opinion. Oof. All right. All right. All 
Alright, let them... Oh, they're training? Good, let them train. So, victory, our determination, and our resolve. Across the Central Siberian Republic, radios crackled to life at once, bringing a special announcement from the President Shostakovich. A wheezing cough echoed across the nation before he spoke. Shostakovich, he spoke quietly. A wary edge to his voice, but there was a determination in it that few had known before. My friends began... My friends, the t today the drums of war beat in our lands once more. Today our brave citizens march again to defend their, de defend their democracy. He was silent for a moment. It fills me, as I'm sure it fills you. With sorrow and regret that we must march to battle where brave men will surely lose their lives. Some, I've wondered as why I have, why we have to fight this war. To what end do we send our sons, fathers, brothers, and citizens to risk their lives? I will tell you what I told myself. The separatists to the south, to the east, to every direction we may imagine, they do not seek to protect their citizens and workers. They exploit and desecrate the people, turning their very lives into naught but a commodity. The president spoke now with an uncharacteristic fire in his tone, or his voice. The anarchists and Leninists, overcome by the cynicism and hubris, have fallen into this very same trap. Either they are unable to defend their workers, or they become yet another oppressor. This fate, this fate must not, cannot fall upon a republic. I at, thus I ask you, brave citizens, to fill your hearts with determination and resolve. Determination to defend your homes, your democracy, and your lives. And resolve. Resolve to work for the best interests of peace and peacetime. And to do your best to quell the fires of insurrection with all haste and wartime. When the blood is done flowing, I swear to you that we shall all come together as brothers once more. But the time for this is not now. For now, we must fill our hearts with that cold determination, that fiery resolve. Or else all shall be lost. Give all for freedom. War support and political power. Nice. Which we can not do this now. Has not... Oh, I need to... Okay, so we can't interact with humans. Okay, so we gotta wait just a little bit. Even if I do this, I mean, we lose authority, which I don't like. And, mm, Maybe I'll do it anyway, just because... That's a lot of modernist support, and... Mm, mm, mm hmm. Mm-hmm. But there's a slight chance it goes down, so maybe it's just best to wait. So, the People's Apocalypse, a nation of writers, poets, and scholars, the University of Tomsk produces more manuscripts and manifestos than the most people care to count. Yet one piece published anonymously has begun to spread controversy far and wide throughout Siberia. The People's Apocalypse tells the story of a faceless scholar's journey throughout the fall of the Central Siberian Republic, progressively encountering those who the author identifies as the four horsemen of the apocalypse: Ivan Zavoloko, Genrik Yagoda, Alexander Porishkin, Porishkin, and Nikolai Andreev. Waiting, and Oriotia, after falling ill, the scholar finds the people reduced to babbling madmen, clawing their own out, clawing out their own eyes, and pulling apart their scalps from a pestilence brought on to the land by Zavoloko, poisoning his people with an elixir named Faith and weakening the body of the Republic. Whoa! Chased away by the blind and corrupted, the scholar soon finds himself witness to the lands being set ablaze, and the free thinkers abducted and persecuted by Yagoda as blue-faced demons wage war against the people. Fleeing the slaughter, they come upon endless roads buried under living skeletons, famine consuming the land from. Paul Kurishitkin's terrible betrayal before finally witnessing Alex Andreev's betrayal at Krasnoyarsk, piercing the heart of a nameless soldier embodying the noble republic. Condemning the four men is bringing about the end of the promised people's realm. The story ends with the land destroyed and all four being consumed by madness under the weight of their own evil, turning to stone as hideous reminders of their deeds. Though it is left unaware whether anyone will survive this end of days to remember what has been lost. Oh my goodness, a haunting tale. Oh, and we lost that pitiful power. God dang it. Uh, maybe we can do well against them. Maybe. Uh, over here, extraction. Mm, anything we really want. I don't mind this one because it gets more icy. You get more production efficiency, but you but the gain goes down. I don't mind go the gain going down as long as you get more efficiency. So, streamline it. Oh, we need to do a fact. No. Oh, they paid! National focus. Minus 12%, 0 0.07 for construction speed, 0 0.07 for efficiency cap, and minus growth, which is fine. So they paid. Great, great. Build our government. The time for revelry is over. Now the first days of the new government begins. The humanists have inherited a system built on the foundations of the Decemberists. Though their, though their intentions were noble, no they can remain provisional forever. The rights of the workers and citizens have eroded in the years since the foundation of the Republic, all in the name of an emergency. Although danger still looms over Tom's, association has decided to put its faith in an idealistic constitution that guarantees civil liberties as well as to enshrine basic needs as constitutional rights. Over the coming weeks, the transitional authority of the Decemberists will slowly begin to hand over their institutions to the state of the humanists. Shostakovich will finally or formally assume the presidency and with him arrest the change of his office. The coming years shall decide if the humanists succeed in the defense and expansion of the Republic's ideals or fail. There's a lot riding on this. There really is. Oh, we can build new schools. Uh, agricultural schools or research. That's the academic base. Give it more research speed, which is pretty good. And maybe a little bit more output, too. We got Yeah, we get more output if we do that. Let's see. Research. Well, that's for uh, schooling. Academic base also schooling. This is research, which we have outdated research. So we get less political power, but then you get more research speed. Then you politicize academia. You get more political po Oh, oh. Holy crap. Cutting edge research facilities? That'd be kind of cool. Or you get agricultural methods, which we have basic mechanization. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to go with agriculture. Mm. 
Most definitely. Cool, we did a really good job. If they... They can't just have two divisions. I mean, we could try. I mean, the worst thing we do is lose. A few guys die, you know what happens, but still. That might not be bad. So we're getting support. Very cool. Oh, House of Representatives. Has Burgundy finally done it? Oh, God, help us all. Cool. And one day. And... Why, oh, we can do this now. Consolidate authority. Yes, please. And then we'll do a pro-humanist campaign. Increases humanist popularity in an area. Yeah, that would be good. In a random district. So now we... Well... 29.9%, which is good. 28 seats, of course, still. Oh, I don't... Oh, man, these elections. Oh, this is going to be... This is going to make me probably more frustrated down the line in this campaign. Let's be real. It probably will be. Probably will not make me happy. <laughs> Maybe. I might... Because sometimes when with these campaigns, I have to do stuff like off-screen to get back to a good place where we were at. So... I mean, I love TNO. It's, it's a great mod. I love TNO a lot, but... It can be kind of crazy. For opportunity, eh. Let's political power, more stability, registered voting with universal voting for stability. Let's get stability. For far too long, our government has ignored the cry of the workers and citizens of the Republic. Although Tom's good behind the Urals and thus safe from the bombing that crippled the warlord states of Western Russia, it borders neighbors that lock forward into dismantling its ideals and claim the riches of the Siberian plan for themselves. Thus, the early Republican government deemed it a necessary measure to limit the rights of the people and bring together a united front to stand against enemies from all sides. While the humanists sympathize with its goal, they do not agree with its, to its means. From this day onward, a citizen of Tom's can show how their basic needs clarified as a constitutional right. The labor unions that have flourished in the days of the the Siberian Republic shall again have a place in the vanguard and forefront of the march of progress. None shall know destitution and poverty in the home of idealists, scientists, and heroes. 7.5% is pretty good. That's a pretty good amount of uh, stability you get. Pages from the Humanist Manifesto on Democracy. So, democracy, true democracy, is the ultimate goal and the ultimate end of the humanist program. The humanists seek a society where every facet of life is entrenched ultimately in the democratic process. The workplace should not be a place of oppression, but a place of inspiration, creativity, and cooperation. To this end, the institution of councils and cooperatives are paramount to spreading the humanist ideal. As society and work becomes more and more democratic, the taint of capital will become lesser and lesser upon our society. As people become more educated, participate further in governance, learn to love each other once more, then the lofty ideals of socialism may come into practice. This is why the humanist supports education for all of his fellow man, not simply those fortunate enough to be able to pay. This is why public works and good deeds are paramount of a paramount importance. Society will not change for the better if we enforce it upon the people, becoming a little better than the tyrants of all. Old utopia will only be achieved when every man, woman, and child strive together to achieve it. This is why we do not ally ourselves with so-called Marxist Leninists. While Marx surely provides a valuable insight into the de deconstruction of capital and the bringing of utopia, the cynical devotion to that ideology's adherence, their disbelief in their fellow man, leads to the ruins of democracy and the oppression of the proletariat they so love. It is a tragedy, one that we must seek to prevent in our own republic. This applies to do the devotees of anarchism. While the humanist, his heart full of empathy and love for a fellow man, may understand the longing of total freedom that drives man to anarchy. You must remember that ultimately, such a state of being is only possible when all humanity wills it. Until then, the sad fact is that anarchy is too easily oppressed by outside forces, too easily corrupted by opportunities and evildoers. The humanist, therefore, must remember that all his faith in his fellow man must never be eclipsed by his pragmatism. For if it is he, he has already lost. From D.D. Shostakovich. Dreams of a better world, my friends. Ah, yes, very good. Oh, we can propose a military program. Ooh! Counter... Hover over the mouse on the Duma's on the Duma members counter to check the salon support. Of course, uh, we will propose our army's modernization project. To the Ooh, we have wait prerequisites has lower house majority. Wait, spring is winter's over and the spring Rasputisa has ended, huh? Um, we don't. I guess technically having majority is. I guess that makes sense since everyone else is doesn't have a majority. But okay, you know what? I'm gonna get that just because we can modernize our army. Yes, please. Uh, let's see. Oh, military expansion. Army drills. Oh, we get rifles. Oh, that's not bad. We get some rifles prepared for war. We get some more stability. We lose weekly stability, though. We lose political power. Get double small bonus for infantry. Ooh. You get another military factory? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with that one. Because you get a one military factory in 180 days. That's not great, but you know what? I'd rather have that than not. And we already get 1.36 now, even after those effects are being taken. So, that's not bad in my mind. That's really not bad. Can I beat up these people here? And I want to beat these people up, please. Please. Uh, I can see this. Concessions. Uh, production quotas. So that is consumer goods. Decreases consumer goods. I need more output. Industrial capacity. How do we... I don't see anything that could really help us with output capacity, but... Hmm. Or, wait, hold on. Is capacity just output? Uh, 
No, uh, industrial capacity. Oh, maybe it is output. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Because whenever I think of IC, I think of Darkest Hour. That's just your entire base of stuff. Huh. Minorities is, minorities have equal rights here, huh? Construction speed cap. Factory output goes down. Industrial capacity. Well, let's, you know, let's look on it. Let's see what happens. Before we do that, though. Hmm. Oh, wait. Uh, I, I'm sorry I'm making too many pauses here. Consumer goods. 12%. So it's 12,773. 127735 127735 127735 127735 127735 12 so we have 1277 so it's 2773 so okay so industrial capacity is factory output sorry i played hearts of iron 2 or darkest hour hearts of iron game and factory capacity was just like the amount of factories you had so okay so that's output so we get a little bit less output so be it whatever concessions i'll probably implement concessions again that is probably really something we should honestly do I do want to save up some more political power, though, because we need to do a pro-humanist campaign, but we have stability, which is great. The labor and is... Ooh. Decrease worker contempt by 3 and consumer goods factories by 5%. Yeah, the labor and is labor. In the 20s and 30s, throughout the height of the new economic plan, the Soviet Union lavished Central Siberia with funding and industry. It became one of the most industrialized areas in the Union, and during the West Rus Russian War, the aid and armaments and supplies the Central Siberian Republic sent became legendary with it. The Revolutionary Front pushed farther west. Far farther west, coming close to breaking the German yoke on Moscow before everything collapsed. Soldiers who fought and died for the ideas of a single motherland became etched in the Russian psyche. But the workers are the unsung heroes of the conflict. For the steadfast support of the Republic, as well as the role in ensuring that the foundations of the state are secure, the humanists shall bring the unions back to the negotiating table. The president himself shall inquire and strike a deal with the Fort workforce. Every, one, every worker in Tomsk shall be free to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Very cool. So we have one day left. Yeah, I should not spend so much over there. But, you know, we're looking okay. 29.9, so it's pretty good. 29.6. Not ideal, but you know what? Popularity is probably one of the most important things we have to keep an eye on. District map. So 46.5. December's are pretty low. Yeah, that's not bad. Novosibirsk. Well, no data. Hmm. Oh, come on, I want to raid people. I want to raid them because I love them. That's why. I love them. I just want to raid them because I love them. Yeah, 1.38. We're still getting this one. Maybe I should not have done that. Maybe, maybe not. But you know what? An extra factory so we can at least get artillery. It's probably a good idea. It's probably a very good idea. Because our divisions currently... They use artillery, so we can't really... We probably have a deficit of it, don't we? So minus four for anti-tank. Uh, not to, not yet, but still. It's it, it's good to keep it in, in mind. 73% stability, though. That ain't bad. Central Siberian expansion. Huh. Okay, transistor uh, stuff. Cool, yes, yes. Alright, so we're done with that. 62, we're getting that. We could grab this, but we're not building that yet. Max factories in a state, more output, or... I never use this one just because this one gives you more cap, and cap is just much more important. We could get more output. Let's do that. Mass production methods, one. And then I'm probably going to start focusing at least one slot on, like, infantry weapons, or guns, or artillery, or something like that, just because, uh... Well, we want to make sure that we'll be okay. That our army will be okay. Alright, 45. Oh, we're almost done with this. Cool. Let's go ahead and do free the farms. Ooh, agricultural increases. Ooh. Two mi oh, we gotta get those. So we're gonna start reading free the factories. During the times of the old Soviet Union, Tomsk was a beneficiary to the Siberian plan. Bukharin's plan to revitalize and renew the lands of Siberia, though it did not receive the most amount of aid, that would be Novosibirsk's law. It received enough for the city of Tomsk to maintain its Republican standards of living and political freedoms. However, with the changes that the future will bring, it may not remain so forever. Those that have broken free during the times of the Central Siberian Republic now eye the city with great interest, a piece of importance for the great Russian game. The humanist government, though it would like to instead focus on welfare of other people, uh, has deemed the looming threat as a danger for the people of the Republic. As such, it has set aside budgets for the construction of new factories and the reopening of old ones, with new safety standard codes to go along with it. After all, worker deserves to feel peace and security. Nice. More efficiency. And decreases workers' discontent. And get two! Two! Military factories. Ooh, nascent industrial base. That's going up by three a month. That ain't bad. It's going to be a while before we get there, but... More cap, retention, and gain. Be very nice. Very, very nice. Ooh, ooh yeah. Ooh, how many... Ooh, they're looking pretty weak. You know what? We're going to try it. We're going to scavenge at the same time. And then we're going to do this one. Because I want to make sure we do this fast enough so that we can it can reset so we can get more support later on. Right, popularity in a random district, which is good. Oh, there goes America. Is it... Mm, I, I want more authority. But really popular, we got to make sure that we are always key where we are. Just got to make sure we are always super supported. Super, super, super supported. Oh, what's going on? Initiate raid. 
God, I hope this turns out well. Because we are fighting over a river, but we do have probably, hopefully, more divisions. Hopefully. The trippy, oh, the trippy pay. Great. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I love it. Oh, and we got the political power, so we can do pro-humanist campaign. Oh, we can ask for more support down here, too. Oh, we lower authority. No, I'm going to do this one. We'll do that one first, because we can. I don't want to lower my authority anymore, because even if I do, like, weaken other one's authority, we lose popularity. Oh, maybe I'll still do that anyways. I don't know. 29.9, 29.6, that's not bad. Hmm... Anti-modernist propaganda, which we lose authority, and then they lose popularity. Weaken their authority, we lose popularity, which is... Eh, but then they decrease their stuff, so... We'll free the factories. Uh, rights of man requires all the following. Re direct representation. Increasing ver voting turnout by 6%. Re opportunity. War support. Production efficiency goes up more. Mm. Ooh, civilian factories, I like that. We're going to get more agricultural society development first. Food is scarce in Russia. The most fertile lands lay in the west, beyond the Urals. In central Siberia, industrial matters are aplenty, and the factories that process them are everywhere. The Siberian plan has given Tomsk much, but food remains a problem. With the constitutional changes demanded by the mandate of the humanists, the government needs to find a way to secure a city supply of foodstuffs and staple crops to ensure that no one goes hungry under the watchful eyes of the Republic. The government shall slip it as the farmers. The cost is Im Im immaterial. For the security and safety of its citizens, there is never too high a price to pay for for the Republic. The, whole, the President shall appoint commissars or commissioners to survey the land as well as to determine the mechanical and material needs of the agriculture. The threat of famine and hunger shall never set again its foot upon the doors of Tomsk. Yeah, increase factory construction speed. Cool. And what are we doing here? Pro-humanist campaign? Yeah, cool. More popularity? Yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. Let's see. Oh, Irkutsk won. The beat up Bratia, which is unfortunate. Oh, poor Soblin. <sighs> Oh, a good chunk of uh, Norway is demilitarized, eh? So we have 20 days, that's fine, we can wait. Anything else down here? Prepare for war. So now we have 13. Russia discontent is pretty low, that's a pretty good. Oh, it increases it. We lose a little bit more stability, consumer goods. I'm tempted to do that. Let's do this one first, though. It's cheaper, and we need more construction speed right now. Because we just want to build, 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 build. And we currently are at minus 22% anyways, so not bad. Fact, so we want factory IC. Next one I want to do. Uh, this one's okay. We don't need really. We could use more resources actually, but eh, you don't trade them away if we really need to, right? I see. Gain efficiency goes down. Uh, efficiency goes up by seven point five. We might do that eventually. So, nah. I mean, we're doing okay for now. Decreases workers consumer. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, we'll probably do that one. Yeah, stability. And actually, down here, do we have? Secure control. Yeah, we could get more stability that way. Oh, build new schools, research industrial equipment. I love industrial equipment so much. Because industrial equipment, power tools. We are on power tools. You can get all the way up to here. So we get more output, more output, more construction speed, resource efficiency gain. It's just worth doing all the time. So. Uh, overtures to the people, why not? Though the humanist government respects Pasternak and traditional government's accomplishments, it must admit that the, the latter's time and power was fraught with mistakes. Chief to this was the prefer preference for democratic elitism, cutting the common man and woman of the city and its environs out of the electoral process. It might have been an emergency measure, but to say that the average citizen could not decide for themselves the best course of action in the defense of their city was unacceptable. The people drew inward, becoming apathetic towards the fate of their role in, in a democracy and a critical part of their ideals of the Republic now lies again on its deathbed. Shostakovich and his ministries aim to change this. Elitism, though it has its merits, has no place in a democracy. People must step forward and lend their shoulders to both the defense of the Republic and its governance. Now begins the era for government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We get more stability in exchange for losing some war support. So be it. Oh, it's, I, just, I just want to go to war. Um, yeah, we're, we're not that far east. Cool. Yeah, interesting stuff. I like this stuff. I really do. But let's go back up top and ask for human support. We decrease our authority again. But I really want to max out our support, so. And I might do authority here just because they are leading. And it might lower our popularity by a little bit, but you know what? Modernists are too high. As well as. Bastillardos. I don't know. Bastillardos? Bastillards. Hmm. Decreases popularity. But they might decrease their authority, but maybe, maybe not. Mm. <sighs> I just want to make sure that we keep Shostakovich in power. I am rooting for someone, not based on their ide ideology, but just because how much I like the person. How we should all do elections, right? Totally. <laughs> oh, do we make another factory? But we lost one, maybe? 
Hmm. Get the four good. Italy wins Italo Turkish War. Peace in the Middle East, huh? Well, Cock uh, severely injured in Kiev bombing. Cool. Or maybe not cool. Now, I forget. When does this Jerusalem or the Levant turn Kami? Or when can it turn Kami? Because I've seen it turn Kami a couple times. I don't remember when, though. Or how it does that. Cool. Concessions? Nah. We don't need concessions. What else can we do here? Hmm. Not really much. Support in the lower house would be nice. Overtures to the people. You know what? I'm going to do a one. 36% is just too much. Too high for me. So be it. 29 point. That's still not bad. So. Direct representation? Sure, why not? The legacy of the Pasternak government is immense, and although they have done much good, there's also parts of that the humanists plan to repeal and reject. In the years prior, there used to be two chambers of governance, the Senate and the House. Ostensibly used to represent the outer territories in the city equally, it has been used to check and help the voices of the majority who demand change. The humanists plan to demolish the idea of an upper house, perhaps for good. For that to happen, however, the people must understand the repercussions of such changes. The humanist government shall not waver over this issue. The voice of the people shall remain the most potent power in politics, and when they speak, Parliament must hear. They shall elect their representatives directly, and laws will be introduced to hold the politicians accountable to their constituents. It sees. The humans accept that the masses are flawed, but their opinions need change, not ignorance and limitation. We get stability and a little bit more manpower, which is very nice. That's just very, very nice. So we did this. We get more support in the lower house, which is kind of okay since we already. So, so we did this one, which decreased our popularity. So we, but we still have asked for human support in the lower house, which I think kind of offsets that. So that should be pretty good, even though December's authority is still going back up again. So that's not ideal. Really not ideal. Please, I want to just—I just want to raid. Why does no one have money? Or I mean, uh, loot, loot—that's what they call it, loot. Mm, yeah, we did them last time. How about Camarovo? It's been a while since we've done them. USA one has no one has loot. Oh wait, hold on. Krasnoyarsk has loot. We promote social democracy and stealing the loot of other people. Thumbs up. Everyone loves it. Do that. I just want to beat him up, man. Uh, uh, oh, oh, this one. There we go. Let's go and do this one. Cool. These our guys actually aren't ready at all, but whatever. They'll get there soon enough. Oh, did we complete this one too? All right. So we are now at 29.9, 21.2. That really didn't help out much at all, did it? <laughs> Wait, that's supposed to be great. Oh, I mean, yes, it it, it works immediately. And then you have to wait for the effects to go down, which is fine, whatever. All right, let's go ahead and do some more infantry stuff. Uh, 54, infantry weapon improvements too, very cool. Direct representation, very awesome. Initiate raid, we're gonna wait. No, we're not. Direct representation. Transparency and responsibility. The salons of the city do not act as political parties of the other pol pol politites in the world. Our policies of the world. The great four salons, the modernists, the bacillards, the humanists, and decembrists are as much artistic movements as they are political. The resulting fusion has rendered the state various nature as opaque and labyrinthine, perhaps even Byzantine. The common citizenry is unfamiliar with the inner workings of the governments, and such they cannot hold the salons accountable to as much detail as they would like to have. Such things must change. Op opacity. I can't speak, I'm sorry. And obscurity shall have no place in the city. The citizens must know that their duties and their obligations towards the ideals of the Republic, but they must also retain their rights and voices in the government, which shall lift the veil over the nature of the state, and the people shall know the specifics of the political process. They have kept them blind, we have kept them blind for so long, and now they must see and learn. We lose political power, but increase voting turnout by 6%? Why not? Why not? Election. House. Oh, uh, seat change. 63, House elections. Okay, the Tiger of the East roars once more. Okay, cool. Bulgaria starts with Germany. All right, then. Should be paid. Hey, look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kemerovo. Hey, hey, hey. Kemerovo. You want to better yourself? No, no, no. Oh, we can do this some more. Uh, let's see. Consumer goods. Divert civilian production. Consumer goods. Uh... I'm thinking about doing that one. Efficiency gain goes up. Gain goes down. More factory output. Speed. Uh, I guess we don't have no more, no more construction speed yet, so... You know what? We'll increase worker discontent by a little bit, because I want to make sure that uh, we get more output. 0.01. Not bad. Minus 2.2% consumer goods. 
It's not enough, obviously, but we'll get there. We will get there. Welsh Unionist and win election. Britain is not a dream. Cool, so we got one, two, three. Hey, we even got some anti-tank, too. That's awesome. Support government's next, though. You guys looking okay. We will need to train these guys eventually. Um, oh, scavenge for loot. Yes. Please do that. Please, someone try to fight me. Yeah, 29. Oh, wow. They actually have way more support now. Wow. Ilya and Anna. Uh, the greatest siblings do the world over. The heroes Russia needs and deserves. Born into a loving family in the Voronezh, the pair lost, loses everything when the Huns invade and are forced to flee to the urbane metropolitan center of Tomsk in central Siberia. The lives new have been taken from them, but do they give up? No, for now Ilya and Anna must travel across Tomsk through thousands of kilometers of forest and tundra, learning of Russia's past, discovering secrets and mysteries of our nation's rich folklore and history, and unveiling the greatest conspiracy known to the people of central Siberia. What is this conspiracy, you ask? Looking beneath the shadows of Tomsk, exists a great evil known as the Thule Society, it seeks to infiltrate our peaceful democratic state with German influence and myths of Aryan supremacy. They will stop at nothing to undermine Tomsk's survival and spiritual enlightenment, going so far as to summon demons. Only Ilya and Anna, with the help of friendship, teamwork, and friends, get, they meet along their journeys can prevent disaster from reaching Tomsk and no doubt all of Russia. Tune into Radio Siberia to catch the action, excitement, and exploration of Russia's magnificent cultures and landscapes. Ilya and Anna, and all the wonderful programming here on Radio Siberia is brought to you by the Central Siberian Telecommunications Department and various businesses working to provide opportunity and prosperity right here in Tomsk. Thank you for listening. Well, we'll have the budget for Cartoon Vision as soon as we claim, reclaim all of Russia. Cool. I don't know. Uh, oh, there we go. We can consolidate rule. Yes. So we're gonna need to save up, save up a little bit more. Kamarovo, please. Not successful raid. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh wait, they have money too. Uh, but we already had a raid. Oh, we can prepare. Oh, when no, we can't. They don't have any money or loot. Transparency and responsibility. Great. And for opportunity. For the past two decades, the economic hierarchy of Tomsk has not changed much. The collapse of the Union brought about an entire era of stability carried on by the presence of the gains made during Bukharin's Siberian plan. As such, many citizens of the working class origins have the same status as their predecessors, poor, with neither the background or, nor opportunity to achieve more. The humanist government has sworn from the very beginning of their Salon's existence to the end of the stagnation and usher in a new era divine by this, not by the stillness of life, but pursuits of happiness. The state shall open schools and the funding for education shall increase several fold. All the doors in the Republic must open for all those who live in it. The humanist shall go further than providing them the mere opportunity to you to obtain comfort, but also the means. All within the city shall know the happiness and, if not, the ways to achieve it. Which only decreased workers' discontent by a little bit, but that's okay, you know. Not successful raid, not successful raid. Uh, hmm. Alright, that's Siberian Black Army. Prepare raid against Siberian Black. Wait. What? Siberian Black League. Oh, League. Oh, we have a League. Wait, it's a Black League. Siberian Black League. I mean... Uh, what? Man, eh, regardless. I mean, we can move these guys around if we want to. I mean, we could beat these guys up again. That'd be cool. I doubt we can actually do it again so so soon. But we'll see what happens, you know? I'm open I'm open to things like this. Still point eight. We probably want to start training our guys. But then we're going to lose our, some of our uh, equipment, which would not be very good. Still eight. Keep going, keep going. 1.43. How is this looking? So we are at 46.5 still, which is not bad. Not bad, so. Which is very, very good for us. Yeah, we moved over here. Can't really do much else. Uh, that's fine. I mean, I'm just, I'm just looking around. If we can raid, please. Ah, oh, the plans of... Planet of Storms, a popular new book is circling through the upper echelons of our society. The Planet of Storms by Alexander Kasantetsev is a fictional story about Russian cosmonauts set in the distant future of 2010, performing the first exploration of the planet Venus. The cosmonauts face many dangerous challenges such as meteorites, carn carnivorous plants, dangerous aliens, and deadly diseases. The end of the book reveals an extraordinary plot twist that takes both everyday readers and accomplished critics by surprise. The book is widely believed to be influenced by the ideas of major Russian cosmist thinkers such as Alexander Bogdanov, and Nikolai Fedorov. It sounds very, it sounds kind of familiar. Uh, Kazantsev uh, confirmed that he was inspired by these ideas and did include them in his novel. The concept of cosmism, cosmism 
primarily include the ideas of a new, almost utopian world, one where humanity would have reigned free in space with the ability to acquire an infinite amount of resources. Cosmism also focuses not on just science and technology, but also on culture and natural philosophy. Cosmism even includes ideas of bringing the dead back to life and the achievement of human immoral immortality. Wow. This Russian philosophical current has gained much renewed interest in Tomsk with the rise of the modernist salon and its ideals of a well-ran free society that values knowledge. Well, the book has a sheer detractors. It's fiercer critics cl slamming it for being scientifically impossible. Many people, both young and old, are com complimenting the book for its many twists and thrilling writing. Well, it may be popular in Tomsk, but unfortunately it does not see much popularity besides the beyond the Republic's borders. It seems not many people are up to purchasing and reading books in the world of Russia. However, there have been rumors of a movie adaptation being produced, so Alexander's story might not be quite over yet. Where's my copy? And we'll read this soon enough. The individual and his capabilities... The Republic has made great strides in the area of education. Although recently opened, the public schools are popular with the people, and many are already planning their way to higher levels of expertise, yet there are many within and without the Humanist Association that have felt that Shostakovich and his cabinet have not gone far enough to reach the educational benefits promised by the campaign. The government shares their concerns and is decided to take action in furthering the cause of culture and science. It is not enough for the individual to have the opportunity to achieve greater things in life. They, as human beings, deserve the means to do so well. Uh, this needs to transcend all other areas in life and all others in life, whether it is for political power or military might. It is not enough for the people to merely have this thought of poverty expunged from their minds, but they must have plenty, and for this feeling to never leave them. Good. Good, good. When can I do this? No, successful raid notes. I mean, I can't do it just because we've already had a successful raid. That's why. I'm stupid. No, I'm not. I wasn't thinking. The humanist air. Nekhlachov always kept his eyes on the other Salon leaders during Salon's negotiations, and while this was part partially in order to maintain one step ahead of the others, he also can help studying them on a personal level and admire them for their positive qualities. One man, who was not yet a leader, but was effectively a leader in waiting, had recently begun to fall under Nekhlachov's attention as well. Uh, M. Weinberg was a man who had an interesting story. How does a Polish Jewish composer who lost his family to the Nazis end up as the heir to one of the most main contenders for control over an idealistic experimental republic in the middle of Siberia? Surely he had to be something of an idealist himself, steadfast in his convictions and forceful in his desire to improve the lives of others. He also been forced to flee all over the place due to the German invasion and Soviet collapse, relocating to Minsk and Tashkent, and finding his way into both central Siberian politics as his plan to move to Moscow after the war could never come to fruition. Well, in Tashkent, M. or Mcheslaw, the friend of the current leader of the humanists and the fellow composer Shostakovich. The series of events that leads to Mcheslaw. Mcheslaw became the heir to the humanist Salon was certainly turbulent, although the man did possess certain qualities that made him a rather natural leader. Lekachev watched him as he negotiated, while sharing his friend Shasta's strong idealism. He also had a fair share of, prag sheer of pragmatism and charisma that allowed him to appeal to both his political counterparts and the average citizen alike. From Lekachev's perspective, Mcheslaw uh, may have been somewhat ideologically misguided, but he could clearly see that the soon-to-be humanist leader was a good man at heart. He's no worse than Lekachev of or either of the others, so... Say la vie, it is what it is. What it is. I'd love to do more of this, but we just... Oh, we can build new schools? How about new workers? Schools or workers? Well, schools produce workers, and workers can get a better education by going to school. Supposedly. Uh, so, we'll go with workers. <laughs> oh, no. Alright, I'm just, I'm just waiting to get this one. I know this video's gone along. I n almost never make the second video in a campaign, like, over 50 minutes long. But, you know what, with this campaign, I want to spend a little bit more time each episode with TNO. So, it is what it is. Matai assumes control of the Gulf. Well, oil is the lifeblood of the Empire. And I want to release one more focus before we end this episode, so. Could get more stability, too, but mm, we're okay. Oh, I just want to consolidate humanist rule. That's all I want right now, man. And, of course, to do, like, raids and stuff. Uh, yeah, we already have. We still can do it yet. That's fine, whatever. I want to do more of this, but what I think we're doing pretty darn well. I mean, we already have minus 22% consumer goods, 0.2 construction speed, 0.1 cap, 0.01 up, and we do have minus 0.05 production efficiency growth, but you know, it is what it is. All right, oh, yeah, let's do consolidate human rule, humanist rule. So we went up to 22.6, we went up. So when it removed, greatly increases our authority, which is fine. We just gotta wait for it. And then when you, we got to ask for support in the lower house, we decrease our authority, but greatly increase his lower house support, which would be very nice. 22.6. Got to keep that in our mind. 22.6. Please, I just want to raid. We are peaceful. Totally peaceful. Oh, we, made, we, well, we got that uh, military factory done as well. And we shall end this episode with labor's revolution. More production. Ooh, civilian stuff. 
Let's grab this one. Labor's Revolution. While Russia descended into chaos following the collapse of the Union, the outside world has changed. With their interests within their art interests are the revolution in the matter of industry and production. Ways to maintain productivity while giving the workers more free time to pursue their own private interests. Among these are the science of management as well as mechanical automation. The same fields that brought about America and Japan's ascension to their places among the powers of the world. From what we have heard of the broader world, these are also applicable to Tomsk and to Russia as a whole. The humanists shall implement these innovations into the city, although with a different intent than most. The government shall aim to free more hours for the workers, using automation and shifts to maintain the same level of productivity and pay. Perhaps given time, they would reduce surpluses, not deficits. Sorry, I hit my piece of paper there. Cool, and that will end today's episode because it's gone on long enough. And which we can prepare a raid against the Black Siberian Army, which we will. So, hope you enjoyed today's uh, episode, guys. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and let me know should I change how I'm doing my support in the House of Representatives, and whether you agree or not with, with my choices with the legacy of the Siberian plan. Regardless, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.